you ever want to annoy an astrophysicist, you just need to tell them that you don't believe in dark matter. Because most of them are pretty much convinced that 80% of the matter in the universe is some invisible stuff that try as they might, they can't detect. And that idea is more popular than ever because dark matter's biggest competitor, modified gravity, recently ran into trouble by making a wrong prediction. Or so I thought until I read this new paper. Let's have a look. The recent data that spelled trouble for modified gravity came from wide binary systems. Those are solar systems in which two stars orbit each other, but at a fairly large distance. I talked about this in several previous episodes. New is that John Moffat has shown that his theory of modified gravity fits the data just fine. So it seems somewhat premature to declare the idea dead. Why are the wide binaries such a problem for modified gravity? It's because if dark matter exists, which it may not, then the amount of this invisible stuff is very thinly distributed. You see, the reason that astrophysicists introduced dark matter was to explain some anomalies in their observations. Things like that galaxies rotate too fast and that galaxies and clusters move too fast. But this seems to happen only on scales much larger than our solar system. If you believe in dark matter, then the obvious explanation is that the dark stuff has a very low density. It adds up on large scales and then has a noticeable gravitational pull that speeds up galaxies. But in the solar system, you wouldn't notice it because it's just not enough of the stuff. And that dark matter would be so thinly distributed is also why you don't expect to see any evidence of it in these wide binary systems. In a binary system, basically what you see is what you get if you believe in dark matter. For modified gravity, the situation is more complicated because you can't just change the law of gravity in our solar system or on our planet. We'd have noticed that. So to make modified gravity work, you somehow need to switch it on for large things like galaxies. But how? The most widely used version of modified gravity is modified Newtonian dynamics. And in that approach, the modification kicks in at low acceleration. This means, loosely speaking, it becomes relevant once the average gravitational pull is sufficiently small. If you're near a heavy body, like the Earth is next to the Sun, the average gravitational pull is large, so no modified gravity. But if you look at a star that's far away from the center of a galaxy, then the gravitational pull becomes quite weak because most of the mass of the galaxies is in the center. So that seems to explain why the effects kick in in the outer parts of galaxies, just like observations say. The issue with wide binaries is now that the further away the two stars in the binary system are from each other, the lower the acceleration. So they cross over from the range where gravity should be unmodified to where it should be modified. And the data seem to say that there's no such crossover. For wide binaries, you have normal gravity, end of story. If that's correct, that's devastating news. I've actually worked on modified gravity myself. And for me, this was definitely a point where I said to myself, that doesn't look good. And Albert agrees. I must add that there have been somewhat different results of the data analysis for wide binaries from different groups, and some of them actually say they do see what modified gravity predicts. But at least so far, it seems to me that the study that's using the most reliable data analysis clearly speaks against modified gravity. However, this per se isn't evidence of dark matter. It's just that it seems to remove the main competitor. At least that was the status so far. But plot twist, maybe this data just paved the way for a different theory of modified gravity. You see, there isn't just one theory of modified gravity, just like there isn't just one theory of dark matter. The one that we most often talk about is modified Newtonian dynamics, MOND for short. It actually has a big shortcoming, which is that it is, as the name says, a modification of Newtonian dynamics, not of Einsteinian one. As such, it doesn't 
have a speed of light limit, so we already know that it can't be correct. However, John Moffat has a different theory of modified gravity, which is not Newtonian, and it works together nicely with Einstein's theories. He just calls it modified gravity, mock, though I've heard people joking, it really stands for Moffat gravity. This theory isn't new by any means. It's been around for about 20 years. It's just one of those cases where no one really cares. I'll admit that this is a bit awkward to talk about because I've known John for pretty much these 20 years and I know he watches this channel. So, John, in case you're watching, you know, I never understood why people aren't paying more attention to what you're saying. Yes, it might be wrong, but compared to a lot of other stuff I've seen, including my own, it works remarkably well. The major difference between Mond and Mock is that in Mock the modification doesn't kick in with acceleration. It kicks in at a particular length and how it kicks in depends on the type of system. In his new paper, John shows that in Mock there just aren't any changes in wide binaries no matter how wide. He's also previously shown that it works just fine for galaxy rotations, also for galaxy clusters, the cosmic microwave background, and what's there not to like? Well, one thing one could criticize, and I think that's one of the major obstacles, is that Mog is more difficult than Mond. It introduces two new fields, a scalar and a vector, and that makes the maths somewhat cumbersome. Really, the major difference to dark matter is that these fields don't have particles associated with them. So I guess that's why particle physicists don't like it. It's also a very interesting paper because should it turn out that the data later goes in favour of Mond after all, then John just killed his own model. So stay tuned. Did you know there's a free and easy way to learn more about the science behind all the videos you've been watching? Yes, there is. Go and check out Brilliant.org, who've been sponsoring this video. On Brilliant, you find courses on a large variety of topics in science, computer science and mathematics. It's a fresh and new approach to learning that makes growing your knowledge easy and fun. I've learned so much there. All their courses come with interactive visualizations and follow-up questions. Some also have videos for demonstration experiments or executable Python scripts. This really gives you a feeling for what's going on. Whether you want to know more about solar panels, neural networks, astrophysics, special relativity or computational biology, brilliant has you covered. I even have my own course there, that's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It's a beginner's course and covers topics such as interference, superpositions and entanglement, the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. And of course I have a special offer for viewers of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabine, you'll get to try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for full 30 days and you'll get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Links in the description below, so go and check this out. Thanks for watching, see you tomorrow.